here, Dr. Kakamani. Yes, it's a pleasure and honor to present uh, the results, the 10 years results of the AMROS trial. AMROS stands for After Mapping of the Axilla Radiotherapy or Surgery. It has nothing to do with bitter, because AMROS is in Italian, but it is in the, means bitter, but it's a sweet trial. So uh, uh, you will understand this later on why I think so. So this is the AMROS trial, and it is the most important uh, uh, role of mine in this trial, of me in this trial, was find out this acronym. Um, so uh, I have no disclosures. In the background, it, probably you all know what the central node biopsy is. It, you know the central node is the, the lymph node most likely to harbor the metastasis. And uh, these lymph nodes can be identified during surgery by using traces, either radioactive or colored traces. And these nodes are most likely to harbor the cancer cells from the primary tumor through the lymph vessels. And the standard paradigm is if the central node is clean or only containing minimal disease, there is no further X-ray surgery indicated. And if there is cancer, complete X-ray surgery. And this is associated with side effects, uh, um, predominantly uh, lymphedema. Uh, we had, in, in the 90s, done a couple of trials where we randomized between surgery and radiation therapy in patients with clinical unsuspicious lymph nodes in the axilla. It's before the central node era. And there, it turns out, for smaller trials, that radiotherapy appears to be um, an, an equivalent to, to the surgery. So this, uh, this trial started in uh, 2001, where for patients with invasive breast cancer between 5 mm and 5 cm, uh, clinically not negative, either by palpation or ultrasound, and were scheduled for bre breast conservation or mastectomy at any age, and of course, informed consent. These patients were randomized to either axillary clearance or radiotherapy before we did the central node biopsy, because, one, we want to prevent selection bias if we did it afterwards, and we, were, we had the information of central node biopsy afterwards, and then doctors made think, okay, this is not a patient for the trial, this is, I want to treat them anyway. So to prevent selection bias, and secondly, to enable doctors to do an axillary clearance in the same operation for those patients who were randomized to the uh, axillary clearance uh, by doing a frozen section interoperatively, and patients who were randomized, if the sentinel was positive, to clearance, the, we could proceed in the same surgery. So that was the reason. This. This system caused some imbalance in, uh, in the number of patients who had uh, actually clearance and radiotherapy, you will see later. So we started off with 4,800 patients, and one third of them had a positive central node, and these were randomized between axillary clearance, 744, and radiotherapy, 681, as I alluded to, this small imbalance in uh, the number of patients. Um, the in 2013, we had the first five years results, and there was no difference between surgery and radiotherapy. There were very few relapses in the axilla, and there was significant less lymphedema after radiotherapy. So this was the first results, but it was criticism. Uh, there were so few events that the trial was underpowered for this non-inferiority design. We, we needed 52 events, and by then we had 11 events and it would take another 30 years to, uh, to come to this 52 event, so we presented as it was, but it was underpowered, but it was clinically very nice for the patients, of course, because there were very few events. The, the other one was, uh, the follow-up is too short, five years, and we have to see a longer follow-up. So, in, in itself, results were not universally accepted, not in every country. So now we have the 10 years analysis, and the patient populations we analyzed were without those with a positive central node. And the median follow-up is now 10 years, and the uh, cover date was at, as of uh, February 2018. With the, uh, regarding the side effects, we have an update of five years because we have much more forms at five years, and we don't have forms at 10 years because that was considered too expensive to get uh, all these patients to forms at 10 years. So we have a five-year follow-up on lymphedema. The baseline, the age was 56 in both groups, well-balanced, and the grading was well-balanced <coughs> and as, as, uh, as ex 
expected uh, small tumor, 70 millimeter, and 60% uh, of women had a preoperative ultrasound of the axilla, 40% had only clinical palpation. Uh, the vast majority underwent breast conservation because they would have radiotherapy anyway. A small proportion had a mastectomy, and over 90% had any systemic treatment because of the positive central node, uh, either chemotherapy, hormonal therapy, or the combination. And the, the radiotherapy to the breast and chest wall was well uh, distributed between the two groups. The number of central nodes was also equal in two groups, about <coughs> two. And the size of the metastasis in the central node was in uh, two thirds of patients, was a so called micro metastasis, and uh, in one third, minor metastasis, minor metastasis. The median number of nodes in those patients who had an axillary clearance was 15. And more interesting, in those uh, lymph nodes in patients who had an axillary clearance next to the positive central node was one-third. So 33% had more positive nodes in the axilla uh, in those patients who had an axillary clearance. And one expect, of course, the same proportion of node positivity in those patients who had radiation therapy to the axilla. So, one could imagine that one third of the patients with radiation to the axilla also had positive nodes at primary tre treatment. These are the 10 years results, nothing happens. So at five years, in the axilla clearance group, four patients out of 744 had um, an axillary first event, and now it's seven. And uh, the radiotherapy group is seven patients and now it's 11 and uh, well, you can imagine this is not a significant difference and it is again extremely low reoccurrence of lymph node metastasis in this group. And of course it has no effect on disease free and overall <laughs> survival as you may expect. Um, what we've encountered that there was a small excess of second primaries in the patients who had axillary radiotherapy. And uh, this is to some extent in contralateral breast cancers and on other sites, but in itself, the absolute numbers were very low. Um, we cannot exclude an effect of the radiation therapy to the axilla, but we have to realize that 85% of these patients received radiation therapy anyway because of the breast conservation. So, it is, it is for us uh, difficult to see whether the addition of the auxiliary radiation field would uh, lead to more second primaries. The side effects, five years, and particularly the lymphedema, and we have clinical observation, we have measurement of lymphedema, and we have the observation of uh, treatment. And as you can see, the, um, the occurrence of lymphedema in the radiation group was half of that in patients who had um, a surgery, and this maintains over the years, as the five years, 20% of patients who had axillary surgery had signs of lymphedema and treatment of lymphedema as compared to 14% uh, in patients who had uh, radiation therapy. In the clinical observation, it's the same figures. In treatment, it's an even larger difference, but um, in general, patients who get surgery in general get initially already more treatment than patients with radiation therapy. In general, um, in, in surgical practice, patients who had an axillary clearance are sent to the physiotherapist for prevention of lymphedema. So in conclusion, both axillary clearance and radiotherapy provide excellent and comparable local regional controls. In patients who have a positive central node in the axilla, after 10 years, there's significantly less lymphedema after radiation therapy to five years, and therefore this can be considered as a standard procedure. And of course, I'm very grateful to the patients and all the co-workers in many hospitals. Thank you.